Mmm, it's an orange juice. What's up, everyone? This is OJ. From now until the 16th, G Fuel is having a huge sale. Tubs are buy one, get one free. Let's break down how this Battle Ram deck works with the individual cards. Along the way, I hope these tips help you even if you don't use this deck. The Ram is insanely underrated. In this deck, it's a secondary win condition where some matchups, you will never connect the Ram to their tower. That's fine because you have a Miner and Poison. My opinion is that the Ram does not need a buff. During the Battle Ram challenge, it underperformed, but that's only because everyone literally built a deck with a hard counter to the Ram. It's kind of like a hog, but it's also an insanely good defensive card. Think of it as two barbarians with a shield, kind of like beefier guards. The ram itself can tank two hits from a P.E.K.K.A, and those two barbarians that spawn will also tank two hits. This is important to know since the P.E.K.K.A just got an insane deploy time buff. If there's a monster push coming your way, you can combo it with an Inferno Tower to stop everything. The Inferno Tower takes out the tank, and the battle ram literally distracts everything behind the giant. Then, right when the battle ram is destroyed, two barbarians spawn and just shred every back end support. The battle ram can be used to defend against most situations. Despite it behaving like a hog, it's great for absorbing ice spirit and damage. The barbarians that spawn are not frozen. I'm not sure how these interactions will unfold after true red and blue is fixed, but let's assume these issues don't exist and that the ram does not bypass these buildings regardless of true red or blue. Knowing these building placements is really important for applying pressure and splitting up their elixir into both lanes. A battle ram deals over a thousand damage, so guaranteed it'll never be ignored. All spawners have a one tile hitbox radius, so they're easier to clip with spells and they'll draw the hog and ram differently. All defensive structures, including Mortar and Expo, have a 0.6 hit radius. This means they have slightly less pull strength on Hogs and Rams, while being slightly harder to clip with spells. If your opponent plays a defensive structure 4 tiles from the river, you'll always be able to bypass a Battle Ram in the opposite lane. As long as it's a defensive structure, that lane will be wide open for you to send in a Battle Ram in the other lane. Without bringing in true red or blue into the equation, if your opponent plays a spawner 4 tiles from the river, the battle ram will not bypass. But if you play the battle ram 1 tile to the edge, it actually will bypass the spawner. It's kind of like a ghetto pig push. To get around this, your opponent has to plant the spawner 1 tile forward. After they've placed the spawner this forward, there's no way your battle ram will bypass even if you plant it on the edge. However, if they preemptively played a cannon 3 tiles from the river in that same spot, it will bypass because it's a defensive structure, but only if your ram is on the edge. If you're defending against the battle ram and you have a spawner, 3 tiles from the river is safe, and if you have a defensive building, you will absolutely need to save it to absorb the ram. Let's talk about all the other cards. Skeletons are such an amazing card with the fourth skeleton reintroduced. It's the ultimate defensive card that can pull mini P.E.K.K.A, Prince, and all the other single target units. Against a single musketeer that's left over from a defense, you can completely take it out. She won't get one shot on the tower anymore since there are four skeletons. Usually after defending your push, there are leftover minions that come, and they'll typically send in a miner to support. If you can afford the tower damage from that miner, this puts you 5 elixir ahead by kiting them with skeletons and ignoring that miner. If your enemy doesn't have the log on hand, a miner and skeletons are really annoying. Despite the knight countering the miner, those skeletons still make it to the tower and deal 400 damage for just one elixir. It's an effective combo if their only answer to your miner is the knight. I've had players zap my skeletons because of how annoying it is. There are so many functions to this card. One important aspect is that it serves as a cycle card that rotates your deck, allowing you to control the rotation of your deck and force your opponent to play on your cycle. This card pairs incredibly well with the Inferno Tower. If they have a single hitter like Musketeer, Mini P.E.K.K.A, Mega Minion, or whatever supporting their giant, this one elixir card absorbs 4 attacks, buying your Inferno time to take out that giant. Knowing how to play the Inferno Tower is very important in flawless defense. There are all sorts of locations to place buildings. I'll point out the important placements. These are the ones you should memorize if you want to be MLG. If you do a 4-2 plant, which is 4 tiles from the river and 2 tiles from the arena tower, this pulls giants and golems, and tanks hits from a musketeer. If they play a giant in the back and you punish them by playing units in the other lane, they won't have enough elixir to have anything to support the giant behind. This is when it's safe to do a 4-3 plant, 
Having the Inferno Tower in the opposite lane is so far that they won't be able to save the Giant even if they have a Zap. If you don't have anything to take out their back end troops, you should not do a 4-3 plant, since a Musketeer will just bypass the Inferno Tower and just destroy the tower. Against a Royal Giant user that packs minions, after they find out you have an Inferno Tower, you can be sure the experienced player will send in minions to distract the Inferno Tower. This is when you play the Inferno Tower beside your tower. The minions won't be doing their job to distract your Inferno, and the Inferno will be enough to take out everything. If they zap, you'll need an Ice Spirit or Skeletons for that extra damage on the Roll Giant. This is a huge game of reading your opponent, so it's good to switch it back and forth because your opponent will try to predict your last placement. Whether it's a Roll Giant, Golem, or a Gentle Giant, if they're packing a Lightning or Poison, the only safe position is to plant it right at the river, one tile in the opposite lane. Poison and Lightning both have a 3.5 tile radius, so this position is the anti-spell placement where the Lightning can't strike both the Inferno and the Arena Tower. The Skeleton Army should exclusively be used as a defensive card. It can defend against most ground units, even the ability to shut down Goblin Barrel completely. It can take out Electro Wizard, Musketeers, Princes, Pekkas, and Giants. The army just outputs so much damage. Between Skarmy and Inferno, I like to switch it up so they can't prediction log my Skarmy if I choose to play an Inferno Tower instead. Since the Zap nerf, the only hard counter to Goblin Barrel is the log, so you'll want to save this card to take out the Barrel or Back End Princesses. You gotta be careful with bait and try to reserve it for the Barrels though. Also, the pushback is incredibly handy for changing the outcome of a situation as well. Check out my log video if you want more details on log tech. The Miner and Poison are your primary win conditions. These are almost unstoppable damage. As long as guards don't become meta again, the Miner will win. Whenever you've made some positive trades or there's an opening, send them in. Placement is very important. With the Rise of Tornado, the hardest places to pull them toward the King Tower will be around this corner here. If their Tornado placement isn't on point, the tower helps the Miner resist the Tornado and it won't activate the King's Tower. If their counter is Ice Golem, planting him in the back is particularly effective because an Ice Golem can't stop your Miner from attacking. Switching it up to confuse your opponent is always a good idea, but planting the Miner in the front can be a bit risky because it's the easiest spot to push him out of the tower. If they've already focused on your Miner to activate the King's Tower with a Tornado, then this is the only tile that is safe and is out of distance from the King's Tower. This Battle Ram deck has a higher skill ceiling, so it's not exactly easy to use, but it is very reliable for me to reach 12 wins consistently if I can play flawlessly. You have to play conservatively, slowly chipping them away. Often they can completely shut down the Battle Ram, so you're going to need to rely on the Miner, Poison, and the Log for steady chip damage. This means that if you're facing a really huge Golem, Lava, or Giant deck, and you make one mistake, you will lose all of your progress. So this deck archetype can be frustrating to use when you're first learning it. It doesn't really matter which side you push. I typically send in the Battle Ram on the side that's open. Constant split pushing on both lanes pressure your opponent continually. This deck works for mean grand challenges, but there is no magic deck that will bring you to 12 wins. The way you play a deck is more important. Remember only 0.65% of the player pool reaches 12 wins. In this match, my opponent is running a P.E.K.K.A. Double Prince, and this deck demolishes heavy tank decks with the Inferno Tower. You just need to protect it. With my opponent pumping up, my plan is to cycle my Miner into rotation. This is easy to do because I have Skeletons. Adding a Battle Ram in the opposite lane, there's no way he can afford to ignore the Ram, and this is where I send in my Miner in the other lane on the pump as a bonus. It tanks for my Executioner. My Battle Ram connects to the tower on the left side, and my Miner takes out the pump on the right side. So this was a successful push, but I didn't have enough Elixir to plant the Skeleton Army in time. So as Prince reaches my tower, if you've already seen my Skeleton video, it's best to let the Dark Prince connect to the tower first, then plant the Skeletons in front. This pushes him back and allows my Skeletons to take him out without getting any more hits on the tower. I was going to counter the Princess with an Executioner, but he planted a P.E.K.K.A. And with a new 1 second deploy time, I planted my Inferno Tower aggressively high to take out the P.E.K.K.A. Then the Princess. This is a bit dangerous because the P.E.K.K.A. could have easily walked out of range at the last second, so I panicked and planted a ram to tank in case it did reach the tower. It's like those times when you plant a unit and you see it ghosting on the map and you want to take it back, but you can't. Noticing he overcommitted defending my battle ram, I knew my miner would get chip damage or force him to spend elixir defending against it. That value poison takes out the minion horde and burns the princes. Since the dark prince's charge has a 360 splash, I used my 1 elixir skeletons to cancel out his charge. This let me play my 
my skeleton army on top of both of them, taking out that massive push for huge positive trades. This deck has a lot of defensive cards, and you want to keep defending and chip away at the tower whenever you can. It's a slow battle, but as long as you don't let the big guys reach your tower, you're fine. There were a few moments that I let the Prince and Dark Prince reach my tower, but I knew I could afford that damage since I was ahead. At this moment, I played an unnecessary the log here. It didn't do anything to the Dark Prince, and it didn't even kill the Princess. And it set me back two elixirs, so I didn't have enough of my skeleton army to defend against that Prince. In the second match, my opponent is playing a Roll Giant Lightning Furnace deck. Starting off, I want to get some early chip damage, so I played my Miner. With the Furnace and Musketeer, this is perfect to poison everything for a positive elixir trade. He distracts my Executioner with the Roll Giant. I'm not sure if he has minions or not yet, so I played it safe and played at the edge. I'm a bit behind on Elixir, but that's fine because I have more tower damage. He cycled his deck and split his Skarmie, so I cycled my Skeletons to get my Miner card. I played at the top left corner so it wouldn't pull his minions, because I can take care of the Fire Spirits and minions with my Executioner. I'm holding off on the Poison at the moment because I'm waiting for him to play his Musketeer, and he does just that. But she wasn't in the Poison for the full duration, so I logged her. He has a Royal Giant in the back, and I know for a fact he has Skeleton Army, so I drew out his Skarmie with Battle Ram on the right side. This ensures that he won't have them in rotation to distract my Inferno Tower. To my surprise though, he has Lightning, but I have Skarmie and he's never seen me play it yet, so he had to react to it, which was kind of too late anyway since it already took out his Royal Giant. Now I know he has the log for my Skeleton Army and he has minions and his own Skeleton Army for my Inferno Tower. I sent in an Executioner to take out the Furnace and a Battle Ram to bypass the right side again to bait out his Skarmie since I don't want that combo with the Royal Giant ever. I planned it out so that the Executioner would tank the tower so my Miner can get a couple extra shots in. Instead of Inferno Tower, I used Skarmie. It's pretty much the same effect. I kinda overreacted with the Inferno Tower because this was my 12th Grand Challenge game and I'm always on edge during the last games. There was a slim chance he would have made it through that Inferno Tower anyways, so I started attacking the other side. It would have been a pain to fight a World Giant with one tower down. At the end, I knew he had the log for my Skarmie and lightning for my Inferno Tower. I should have just played my Inferno Tower in the anti-lightning area, right at the tip of the river. One tile in the opposite lane. This match is against the Hog Cycle deck with Elite Barbarians. At 10 Elixir, I send in a Miner and the enemy plays Elite Barbarians at the bridge. That's an ultra-threatening push with the Ice Spirit behind it. I played a Battle Ram to absorb the Ice Spirit and the damage from the Elite Barbarians. It's an amazing shield. Then I had Skeletons to help my Barbarians. Overall, a pretty good transaction. I'm ahead one Elixir and I have more damage on the tower. But I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It seriously caught me off guard and I almost played Executioner. That would have ended really badly. He played an Ice Golem at the bridge. I have a really strong feeling that it's a Hog combo. So I've already selected my Inferno Tower. I could have played it one tile to the left, but it doesn't matter, it wouldn't have changed the outcome anyways. I want to combo my Miner with the Executioner, but he shuts down that Miner pretty fast with his Elite Barbarians. It's a pretty satisfying feeling that the Executioner's Axe is precisely the right angle to clip the units and the tower. Comboed with the Poison and they're pretty much dead. He hasn't played his 8th card yet, so I'm hoping it's not a building. I kinda test it out and send in a Battle Ram since I know his win condition is Elite Barbarians and the Hog. Ice Spirits and Minions only take out the Ram, but the Barbarians still spawn and chip away at the tower. It's an extremely underrated card. It's quite hard to defend, especially if they don't have a hard counter like a Tombstone. I played my Executioner really close to the tower to take out the minions and Skarmie to take out his Hog, and this is my first time seeing that he has a Fireball. A bit costly to learn his 8th card, but I now know his full deck rotation. This is the perfect time to use Poison because it's double Elixir time, and it's a 3 for 4 trade for his Archers. I played the Battle Ram the same time he played Elite Barbarians. That's too bad because the Battle Ram would have been the perfect shield, and Executioner or Miner isn't enough to tank. Meanwhile, the Battle Ram connects to the tower, and it takes it out. It's a pretty successful push. The Ram is incredibly devastating and can never be ignored. He overcommitted on this push and the Executioner with Poison just shreds everything away. Nothing reached the tower. This deck can take care of most pushes. The Skeleton can take care of individual units. The Skeleton Army can take care of almost all ground units. Executioner and Poison handle swarms. And the Inferno Tower is a tank killing wall. Play slowly, chip away with Poison and Miner. And if you're lucky, you'll be able to connect your Ram. Otherwise, it's a primary defensive card. It's just two Barbarians with a Super Shield. My opponent should have played Ice Spirit right in the front of my Executioner on the left, then Archers on the right. That would have changed the entire outcome of this mini battle. Using this deck, my clanmate and I have never lost to a Zap Bait deck. With Skarmie and the Log to take care of the Goblin Barrel, and Poison or Executioner to take care of everything else, 
There aren't many threats as long as you keep your log for the barrel. With the Executioner in the back, he played an Inferno Tower, so I'm just gonna let that Executioner die and poison his tower. Then play a Battle Ram to bypass his Inferno Tower. I couldn't really counter his Miner with my Skeleton since his poison would have killed them all in one tick. The Battle Ram almost connects to the tower, but the Barbarian still did a decent amount of damage. I really shouldn't have played my Executioner there. They were just Spear Goblins on a full health Arena Tower. It's too late, I've already committed, so I send in a Miner to support the Executioner. He cancels out everything, 8 for 8, so that's fine. Goblin Barrel coming in my way? I don't have the Log, but I do have a Skarmy. His Barrel was played in the front, so the Skarmy doesn't fully counter it. Knowing his Inferno is out of rotation, I sent in a Battle Ram for some pressure. He stops it pretty effectively with Ice Spirit and Spear Goblins. This totally would have killed the Barbarians, but I decided to poison them out so they can start moving to the tower. Not sure why he played Skeleton Army, but they literally vaporized in thin air with the new poison. Pretty confident I can poison out the right side, I played an Executioner on the left. I played my Skeletons the same time he played Poison, and they just disappear immediately. And worst of all, I missed my Log. Those Goblins deal massive damage and I really can't afford those Spear Goblins touching my tower now. I thought he was going to play Skeleton Army, but he played his Poison instead. That was a failed prediction poison, so I wasted 4 elixir. I've already lost the right side, so I need to focus on chipping out the left side now. It's a perfect time to send in my miner because the barbarians are tanking the king's tower. He plays an inferno tower and I'm planning to go all out with a battle ram push. But he played a barrel and my log is out of rotation again. I'm scared of his poison, so I didn't counter with Skarmy. So I played an executioner. I really should have played him a bit higher because that axe hitting one skeleton is not helping right now. I'm at a huge massive elixir advantage after you played that inferno tower. This is perfect because skeletons are so good at distracting it since it takes so long to retarget. It's basically a huge overwhelming push and there's not much he can do. This is probably the largest misplay. The match should not have been that close. I totally forgot to save my log for the goblin barrel. My tower is at full health so it's not like I couldn't afford the miner's full damage. Everyone is getting smarter with Goblin Barrel randomizing its location. I should have waited until it landed before I deployed the log. It's a fine line between taking one stab or completely missing them. I used the log again on his miner. With the poison I can't counter with the skeleton army. I used the log on his miner again. Tons of misplays and this match was way too close. It should have been a solid victory if I didn't keep using my log impulsively. This deck requires a lot of patience, and you can lose to one giant push if you're too reckless with your elixir, or you don't pressure the opposite lane enough. The battle ram is so good at absorbing everything. At first, it kind of feels like a hog, but I see it as one giant shield. In this deck, you could replace Furnace with Inferno, but you'll need to rely on Skarmy as a tank killer. The Furnace will strengthen your win condition. It can be played anytime and is something that cannot be ignored. Since you've watched this far, here's a fun fact. I was sitting inside a McDonald's at 3am with my climate left. We were crafting this deck just hours before the balance update went live. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more quality OJ.